Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is sphere overlap actors slash components. Now this is going to cover two nodes. We're going to cover the sphere overlap actors node and the sphere overlap components node. These two nodes are the same. The only difference is the output will either be components or actors. Now the sphere overlap nodes basically will create a sphere at whatever location and size we want it and see if the items inside of it match our filters. Let me run this example and show you what I mean. I'm going to fire this bullet. We're going to see a representation of a sphere here. And since the actor I wanted to check against was inside of it, it went ahead and destroyed it. I'll fire off this one and we're going to see something slightly different. You'll see the one on the right disappeared, but the one on the left, while it's inside my sphere, didn't. So let's cover why and how this worked. First of all, to note, the overlap actors node itself doesn't have a visual component. We're using the draw debug sphere so we can actually see it. If I was to, for example, just disconnect this and run it through here, you'll still see the same effect. It disappears or doesn't, but you'll see no sphere being drawn. We're just doing this so we can actually visually see the sphere and where it's hitting. Now the node itself has pretty much three required inputs and two optional. The first one is going to be the sphere position. This is a location, X, Y, Z, of where in the world it's going to be starting our sphere check. Then we have the radius, which is basically the radius of the sphere in units. Now, object types is required. So if I disconnect this and I attempted to run this, we'll get an error. It needs to know which collision type, which object collision it's going to check against on the overlap. Now, the easiest way to do this, let me go and delete this, is to drag off the object types and choose make array. And this will give you by default an array of one type, which is world static, which is an object type for collision. You'll see these six here, which match up with our project settings for our object channels, our default object channels. So if you had a custom object channel in here, for example, then you're going to end up with a custom one in here. Since it's an array, you can, of course, add multiple pins and multiple types. For my example, let me go ahead and remove everything except, whoops, remove and remove. Let's remove everything but our pawn so it only collides against a pawn channel. Now, that was important to note because if we went over here and we looked at this character here, you're going to notice his collision preset is a character mesh object pawn. And if we look at his capsule component, we're going to find pawn an object type pawn. It checks against the object type channel. And you'll notice because of that, that is why it was destroyed. This one I changed to make it custom. And if we look at it, you'll find its object type is world static. And if we go to the capsule component and we check it out, its object type is world static as well. That's why when we fired, and even though it overlapped that left one, it is not a pawn, so therefore it was not destroyed. Now if we look at the other two optional options for inputs, we have the class filter and the actors to ignore. These are really simple. If we get anything inside of our array, anything inside of here as an overlap, then we're going to filter it even further. And it's only going to be of this type. By default, everything. But if we wanted, for example, only our enemies, then for example, well, for example, we could find our enemy preset. So I want to say I have it set up as, here we go, a enemy right here. And if we put that in here, then that's going to be the enemy type it's going to hit against. And it won't hit anything else. Actors to ignore is another array. And you could do something simple like make array and add in any actors you want to ignore in addition to the other filters. So it's kind of like all the items, remove anything from, remove anything that's not this, and then remove anything that is this. This is useful, for example, if we wanted to fire and not affect ourselves or not affect, for example, the actor who may be casting this out, we could ignore ourselves. Now, our outputs are going to be similar. We're going to have a Boolean, which is going to be basically true or false if we actually have anything in our overlap. And then we're either going to get the components that we overlapped. In this case, for example, it might be the collision component itself if it was on the pawn channel or anything else that has a collision setup. 
So in this case, none of these would collide. But if we went ahead and looked at our enemy and we checked out the components, we'd find the capsule component has a pawn collision and our mesh has a pawn collision. So we would get back both the capsule and the mesh if we were asking for the components. And if we were asking for the actors, we're gonna get back just the entire actor itself. So our collision enemy actor blueprint. So that's our output right there. And for my example here, if I can find where I put it, all I'm doing is grabbing any of our actors and destroying them. But all that we care about is our node itself and what it outputs. So that's it. That is our simple node, sphere overlap actors or sphere overlap components. It's gonna take in where that sphere starts, how big that sphere is, what type of collision objects we're looking for, filter those out so we narrow it down to only these ones, and then remove anything we don't want and ignore them and then give us back either the actor or the component. So again, an example, if I fired here, we're gonna overlap a pawn, it gets destroyed, and we overlap this as a world static, and it doesn't get destroyed. And I can show you, for example, if we did act, edit, world static, we hit play, we're gonna have a problem where if we shot him, well, pretty much he goes away and the world goes away because my ground floor is world static. But that shows how you can have multiple collision channels and it will respond appropriately. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our sphere overlap actors and sphere overlap components nodes. They're useful, as you saw, when you want to get whatever's around something. In my case, maybe that was a grenade I was firing. And when it hit, it explodes. And I want to deal damage or destroy anything within a certain radius.